Welcome back to Crazy Ball TV. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey guys, I want to appreciate the guys who have uh, subscribed to our channel. Uh, since the last time we were here, we got a few more people who have joined the family. Thank you so very much. Please share, subscribe, like, keep the subs up, keep the likes up. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you joining me. Wow, wow, what a match. My heart rate literally just came back about two hours ago. I mean, you could tell from my facial expression, I'm a little bit disappointed. I wish we got the dub and we keep on moving back. In a match like this, we, we, we did not 100% say we deserved the, uh, the W. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of analysis on the match. You saw the match. And if you did not, please find a way to watch this match because if you don't understand football, if you never watch football in your life, if you are somebody who just came across my channel and you're like, I want to listen to what this fool is saying, please watch City versus Liverpool, April 10th, 2022. This match, if it doesn't bring you closer to football, then I don't know what it is, unless you wait till for the World Cup, because that's when everybody catch the fever. But let's go. The lineup was as expected. The only um, new, uh, I mean, I'll say there's something new that Liverpool did, or as a club did, was a surprise was to me was putting Jota in the lineup. On the other side, I was surprised to see Jesus also started. I didn't. I thought Grealish was going to start, but that, that was as I could say the two surprises that I won't say ours was a surprise, but on the other side it was more of a surprise. But for us Liverpool fans and some of us, you know, I was again with the brother uh, Chris Can and the brother Fahim on the Chris Can calling show. And when he asked me, I told him, "Hey, by the way, shout out, man! Thank you so much for having me again." Uh, but when he talk, when he asked me what front three, because we know what the back four will be, we know what the middle three will be. When he asked me, I was like, we go with the tradition. And I was expecting Klopp to go with Bobby instead of anybody else. Yes, we want to show off DS, but this match, no. And you saw it. We needed somebody who could calm the game down. And that's what I love about Bobby. Because they went, if Bobby comes away game down, then you got Thiago to string out the passes. If Bobby comes the game down and you bring Keita off the bench, Keita can dribble, you know, how he likes to, you know, drive through the midfield and get throws to the final third. I, yes, I wanted uh, Diaz to come off the bench. But I, I think this is a part where I don't want to say club was wrong because, hey, what do I know? I always ride with, you know, I will ride with my manager. I will have preferred that he started... Bobby, because we could have controlled the match a little bit more, especially in the midfield. Because in the first half, we were nowhere. I mean, we were literally playing a second gear. We did not, oh, they came out all guns blazing. And they sad to say, and I'm going to say it, people are going to be like, yo, you're talking trash. I'm sorry, but Pep has figured us out. Pep has figured Liverpool out. He realized that I can't go toe to toe with these guys. They, they scare the hell out of me. We need to calm this rock and roll down. If they're going to play rock and roll, it's going to be a toned down rock. It's not going to be heavy metal rock and roll. And that's exactly what they did. They calmed the game down, especially in the first half. And then the, they controlled the ball. They play exactly like how we play. High press, play the ball from the back. And because of that, that uh, and they, tr you know, I know they also tried to isolate Thiago, but they found out that that was a big mistake. So they changed it. And then they started going to the sides. You know, you could see that they were switching from both sides. You can't say they were targeted Trent. They were targeting Robo too, you know. So it, it was a very, very entertaining match. Uh, City played the, how they played the app behind off. You could tell from the interview that Pep did that he was a very excited about how his team played. And yes, they got a draw because that still keep him ahead. But I think they, they were at their max. And this is the part where it's also frustrating for Liverpool fans, the true red Liverpool fans who are students of the game, who knows the game. We didn't even get off their game. This is the part where it annoys me. We didn't, we went from second to fourth and then come back to second again. This, okay, this score go in five minutes. Seven minutes later, bang, we score a goal. Where did that come from after the way we were playing, right? Second half, you know, they go up 2-1 because of Trent not be able to read uh, the ball coming in. He ran out 
you know, he didn't say nobody talked to him. That's where I think that's a communication issue. If somebody has saw Trent or if Robo was there, he would have known when to get out. And the fact that they, at the time, they both have switched, he didn't see the trajectory of the ball coming. So by the time he running out, he soon, he soon started running from the midfield because if they realized Liverpool's <laughs> back line is impeccable. That offside line is always on point. You saw it when even Sterling scored his goal, right? His shoulder was offside. So, I mean, the game, yeah, people, if you want to make pick, you could blame Trent, but I don't blame Trent. It was just, he was at the, if he was on his right side, I guarantee you wouldn't have been caught up like that. So we come up in the second half where we always play better in the second half. 46 seconds. And we went from whatever gear we was in the first half to like a five and bam, 46 seconds go. And then all of a sudden, we playing at the high, you know, we revving at the very high gear in the third, uh, very revving at the high gear in third, and they were under pressure. So that, that, that's the part where I think it's frustrating because if we had played at the same level as they played, this match would have been, I could see four, five, three, four, like it would have been a lot, a lot, a lot of goals. You can't fault them, man. These two teams are, you know, I have to get, no, usually I have to give them their props. You got to give them their props. You saw how these managers, they love each other, how they love their team. Um, Pep, praise, you know, just showering uh, club for all the praise, you know, vice versa club also doing the same thing. Uh, listening to a lot of the pundits out there, everybody was like, yo, this is a great match. Yes, City had the upper hand and even with the percentile, the percentages, City was at 55, Liverpool was at 45. They had a lot, a lot of great chances. They are home. They play better than us every time we go to Etihad. We haven't won there in about five years. Oh, no, no, sorry. I would say five years, about three years. So this match is what it is. I wanted us to win so bad, but there's still seven matches to go. The quad is not over, people. It's not. They have the upper hand because of the team they're going to play. But this is the EPL. Anything can happen. The team that I'm worried about now is the resurgence of Spurs. You know, so I was like, okay, if we win, and even if we draw with Spurs, that's three points, then it's what we go against goal matchup. And we have the superior goal, you know, matchup in terms, you know. So it's, yeah, disappointed. I'm not really, I'm disappointed we didn't win, but I'm not going to lose sleep on, sleep on it. You know, this thing is not over. We see them again next Saturday. Uh, we see Benfica on Wednesday. They see Atletico Madrid. So they have, a, they're going to burn a lot of energy against Atletico Madrid. And this match, I could tell everybody, they burn a lot of energy. We did not. I could say, well, our midfield day. You could see Salah, second half. Salah is slowly getting back to Salah's uh, beginning of the season, Salah. Mane was, you know, same thing. This is the Mane we've missed. Uh, what's his name? Um, Thiago. You have to pay attention. Otherwise, you would think that he didn't play well. Uh, even when Keita came in, you could see the change in the way, the, the, the movement of the ball. And the thing is, they, a lot of people say they should have come in early. Trust me, Diaz came in in the what, 55th, 55th, 65th minute, which is usually a good time to sub a striker. The thing is, City had so much of the ball, you know, Diaz couldn't have a chance to, to, to even warm up into the game. But when he got the ball, you saw a few, he had, I won't say he had a walk on toes, but Walker had a side eye looking at him like, you're going to be a problem. I know, same thing with Maris coming in. He also giving a problem, but Robo was a beast today. Yes, come to my side. He's defensive. Oh, man. I mean, that's the whole thing. Like, I think the midfield, because we lose control of the midfield, Fab was just all over the place. He, I, he outran himself. He was really tired. And because of that, that means the big man, Virgil, had to be extra cautious of what's going on in the middle and what's going on on his, um, on his side. That's why he was all over the place a lot of times. But uh, we'll see them again on Saturday, and I think it's going to be different. Uh, hopefully, against Benfica, we will do a review on that on um, LFC Vibe show so that we, we know what's going to happen. But uh, in terms of the match, man, this is <laughs> football at its greatest. Now, um, I want to say this. Arsenal fans, Manchester United fans, and Chelsea fans, this is now the greatest rivalry. It doesn't matter 
who's winning every year. They are not winning by 50 points, by 30 points like they did the Centurion's time. It's always going to the wire. That's why it's called a rival. Even when we were crap, we were there. They were still watching their back, like, okay, leave up any time, Liverpool could make a jump. I'm sorry, this is the best rivalry right now in world football, period. If you have a problem, like, you have a problem with it, hey, it's okay. It hurts. I know your team is not part of it, so you want to push your team in. No, you had your time. Ferguson can't handle this. I'm not saying he's not going to win some trophies, whatever trophy it will be. You have, how many times did Ferguson get 90 points? And that was when he had a free, a free hit all the time where a lot of the years there was nobody challenging it. And then, of course, what's the name came through? As Navenga, and then Mourinho came in. But after that, he was still winning. Until the money came from the Saudis, the Sheik brought his money and then, you know, that stabilized by the time. Yes, that was his final year. So you can't say what he would have done. But this rivalry is way, way, it, it, it's, if you have a hard problem, please don't, don't deal with this. But let's move on. Uh, let's talk about what happened over the weekend because it was some very great match. Let's see. So on Friday, we know Newcastle won 1-0, beat the uh, Wolves. Uh, Mr. Wood scored the goal. Uh, that was, it was a, some intense match. Surprise, I had Wolves being the sneak, a sneaker sale that was going to, if any team was going to sneak into the top four, I thought Wolves were going to do it, but they stand to slip. Their goals have dried out. Everton beat Manchester United. That is crazy. That one was crazy. The Man U fans are losing. The, they've given up. I mean, let's just, they don't even lose their mind. They've given up. Their soul has been ripped up. They're feeling like Arsenal fans in the beginning of the season. What's the name? Everton, my, they, they might pull this off. Frank Lampard might pull this up. Uh, what's the name? Arsenal lost to Brighton. I thought this was a shoe off for Arsenal. Hot. The way things are going, you guys might not make it to the top four because you guys have a very hard running. And Spurs have a resurgence and they have a coach who could manage this, you know, this, this battle that they're going through. So, and you guys have a way too many injuries to deal with. <sighs> Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. Chelsea beat the break dirt out of Southampton. Whoa! They, oh my Lord, that, I don't even know where to begin. Even uh, Werner even scored a goal. Two goals. What? Oh my goodness. Least Coach Marsh, he's still winning. He's still winning. You know, you get two more wins. He might be able to, you know, save them. What for? The way things are going, I don't see what for making. And of course, Spurs put in a Class, you know, at Aston Villa, uh, the boy son, three goals, a hat trick. Kane did his thing, you know, even uh, the boy, uh, the club was Jesky, can't even spell his name properly. Brentford, Brentford is going to stay up. They're not going down. 2 0 at beating West Ham 2 0. And West Ham, I think the uh, Europa is starting to affect them. So, Brentford took real advantage of that. Crystal Palace did not play well at all. Even Vieira said, he said, well, they were nowhere to be seen. Uh, Leicester, you know, you know them, lukewarm. Norwich is going down swinging. They're like, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down. And we might even drag some people with us. How did uh, Norwich beat Burnley 2-0? Wow. And of course, the big match 2-2. Liverpool and City. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate the new people who have joined us. Please share, subscribe, like, please comment. If you feel like I need to do something better or add some more things to it, please help this channel out. We're still growing. And thanks to you, we're going to grow bigger. All right, guys, this was a great match. Yeah, we didn't win. But hey, guess what? Next game, we move on. We move. Quasi Bold, Archie. Peace.